In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Welcome, everyone, to Our Lady of Las Vegas Church. Today we celebrate the Feast of the Ascension of the Lord. Also, today in our country we celebrate Mother's Day. And so in a very special way, we celebrate this Mass today in the intentions of all our moms, all the Mother's Day intentions that we have. Our prayers are offered for, to you, our moms, both living and deceased. As we celebrate Jesus' ascension into the glory of heaven, let us do so by acknowledging our sins now and asking God in his wonderful mercy and love to grant us pardon and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, Ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Gladden us with holy joys, Almighty God, and make us rejoice with devout thanksgiving, for the ascension of Christ your Son is our exaltation, and where the head has gone before us in glory, the body is called to follow in hope, through our Lord Jesus Christ your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, Theophilus, I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught until the day he was taken up, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them by many proofs after he had suffered, appearing to them during 40 days 
and speaking about the kingdom of God. While meeting with them, he enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father about which you have heard me speak. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When they had gathered together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He answered them, It is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has established by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him from their sight. While they were looking intently at the sky as he was going, suddenly two men, dressed in white garments, stood beside them. They said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking up at the sky? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, may the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation resulting in knowledge of him. May the eyes of your heart be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope that belongs to his call, what are the riches of glory in his inheritance among the holy ones, and what is the surpassing greatness of his power for us who believe. In according with this exercise of his great might, which he worked in Christ, raising him from the dead, and seating him at his right hand in the heavens, far above every principality, authority, power, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things beneath his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, 
the fullness of the one who fills all things in every way. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Go into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. These signs will accompany those who, who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons, they will speak new languages, they will pick up serpents with their hands, and if they drink any deadly thing, it will not harm them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. So then the Lord Jesus, after he spoke to them, was taken up into heaven and took his seat at the right hand of God. But they went forth and preached everywhere, while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the word through accompanying signs. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You know, the scriptures tell us that after his resurrection, Jesus appeared to his disciples over a period of 40 days. Again, 40 uh, doesn't necessarily mean that many days exactly, but its scriptural meaning indicates a a long period of time. So after his resurrection, Jesus appeared to his disciples for a a time to reassure them and, and to convince them that he truly rose, that he's truly risen and alive after his death. Now, in the the church's liturgical season, 40 days after Easter would have been this past Thursday, in which we would celebrate the Ascension. It used to be Ascension Thursday, it was called. But the United States uh, Conference of Catholic Bishops has moved the observance of the Ascension to the seventh Sunday of Easter, which is today. And so that's why we're celebrating the Ascension today. Now, it's important to understand that the resurrection and the ascension of Jesus are real events which involve his human body. The death of Jesus was very real. His corpse was laid in a tomb. And then on the third day after he died, Jesus rose from the tomb in his physical human body. And his body was not a resuscitated uh, resuscitated corpse, but a transformed, glorified body that was able to transcend the limitations of our physical world. And the ascension of Jesus that we're focusing on today means that Jesus physically left this world in his human body to enter into the glorified heavenly state. And the description of Jesus' ascension is given to us in the Acts of the Apostles today, which was our first reading. And that must have been something to see. You can possibly imagine it. It must have been something to see. We hear that, that the disciples were mesmerized by what they saw, so much so that they stood there looking up into the heavens until the two men dressed in white, well, presumably angels, called them to attention. And they announced that Jesus will return just as they saw him going into heaven. But in the meantime, in the meantime, the apostles have a job to do, to go out and make disciples of the world, and it's time to get started. But first, they have to wait for the Holy Spirit, 
whom Jesus promised would come. Because their mission was not going to be easy, and the Holy Spirit is going to be absolutely necessary to assist them in their mission. They were going to meet with resistance and ridicule and persecution, which they did. But as we heard in the gospel, they will be given the tools to be able to carry on no matter what. They will speak new languages. They'll pick up serpents. They'll even be able to drink deadly things. But none of this will harm them. These are images. These are images of the power of God that will help them overcome any and all challenges as they go about the mission of bringing the gospel to the world. We also heard that they will lay hands upon the sick and that they will recover. Now, this is the ultimate goal of the apostolic mission of the church, our recovery. We are all sick, in a sense, all sick from our sins, from our lack of faith, from our own corruption. But Jesus came to save us and to redeem all of us. The men in white said that Jesus would return. And at that time, there will be no mistaking who he is. But in the Gospel of John, Jesus says, In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places, and I am going to prepare a place for you. And then I shall come back to you to take you with me so that where I am, you also may be. And you know the way that leads where I go. The apostolic mission of the church is to lead the world to Christ and to follow him because he is the way and the truth and the life. Please rise now, everyone, and let us profess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father for all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord Jesus ascends to the right hand of the Father, In keeping with his command to make disciples of every nation, let us lift up our world now in prayer. For the church, that we may proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ around the world, imparting the faith, hope, and love we have found in the Lord, to neighbor and stranger alike, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the gift of peace, which Jesus imparted to his disciples, and which the Holy Spirit extends around the world, may bring an end to strife, violence, and armed conflict. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For missionaries, in the work they do to express and extend the gospel to every corner of the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For mothers, grandmothers, and all those who have played or are playing the role of mother to a child. In thanksgiving for the nurturing love they have poured out for us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick and for the intentions enrolled in our community book of prayer, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have gone before us, marked with the sign of faith, that our risen Lord will bring them to their eternal home, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all Mother's Day's intentions 
and all our own personal intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you have placed your trust in us to extend your grace around the world. Please hear the prayers we make as we carry out the mission that you gave to us and grant them through the one who sits at your right hand, our risen and ascended Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please pray now, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Who accepts sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the peace of the church. We offer sacrifice now in supplication, O Lord, to honor the wondrous ascension of your Son. Grant, we pray, that through this most holy exchange, we too may rise up to the heavenly realms through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For after his resurrection, Jesus plainly appeared to all his disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight that he might make us sharers in his divinity. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, Father. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory, as together we now acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and you are the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ's death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. And humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, George Leo Thomas and Gregory Gordon, our bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Remember all of our deceased mothers and all who have died in your mercy. Father, welcome them into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her beloved spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you, Father, throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and that we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And now at our Savior's command, informed by his divine teaching, together let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, Lord, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. O Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Lord, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, for you live and reign forever and ever. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us share with each other a sign of Christ's peace. Thank you. 
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, and blessed are those called now to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who allow those on earth to celebrate divine mysteries, grant, we pray, that Christian hope may draw us onward to where our nature is united with you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, everyone, for celebrating this Mass today on this Feast of the Ascension of the Lord, that day when our Lord returned to the glory and sits now at the right hand of the Father. We are now in this time of, of prayer, joining with the apostles for the coming of the Advocate, the Holy Spirit. And next Sunday, we will celebrate the descent of the Holy Spirit upon the church with the Feast of Pentecost. I thank all of our ministers who assisted at Mass today, Ther Sue for being our lector, Mikhail for managing our cameras, and Marlene and Dave for lifting us up in music today. Since this is Mother's Day, I'd like to extend our very best wishes to all our moms, to all the, the women in whatever capacity of motherhood that you uh, play. There's so many different ways of being a mother, a mentor, an assistant, a guide to so many people. Thank you for having such loving hearts and for, for watching over the, the children, the people in your lives that you so 
wonderfully cared for with a great heart that you have. So on behalf of all of us here at Our Lady of Las Vegas, very happy Mother's Day to you. If you are celebrating a birthday or anniversary, something special this week, please know that our best wishes go with you. And if you are dealing with something more serious and heavy weighing on your heart, please know that our prayers are with you as well. So let us go forth as we give praise to our risen and ascended Lord and that we receive now his blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is now ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you.